Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. Starting from today, we have a brand new series on white blood cell neoplasms. This is the topic which is most often feared by medical students. I'll try to simplify this topic as far as possible. So in this session, let us learn about the classification of white blood cell neoplasms and etiopathogenesis in general of all the white blood cell neoplasms. So neoplastic proliferation of white blood cells is broadly categorized into lymphoid neoplasms, myeloid neoplasms and histiocytosis. So the lymphoid neoplasms are the group of tumors which are of B cell origin, T cell origin and NK cell origin. Whereas histiocytosis are the proliferative lesions of macrophages and dendritic cells. Okay. And the myeloid neoplasms are the neoplasms which arise from early progenitors of the hematopoietic cells. The myeloid neoplasms are further categorized into acute myeloid leukemia, myelodysplastic neoplasms abbreviated as MDS and myeloproliferative neoplasms. In my earlier session, I have covered in detail about the differences between myelodysplastic neoplasm and myeloproliferative neoplasms. I have also covered a few of the topics in myeloproliferative neoplasms. You can go back and then see those videos. Let us understand the etiopathogenesis of white blood cell neoplasms. Remember, this is the etiopathogenesis of white blood cell neoplasms in general. Okay, I am covering all the lymphomas, leukemias and histiocytosis in general. So broadly, the etiopathogenesis is divided into the cause could be either chromosomal translocations or other acquired mutations. It could be because of inherited genetic factors. It could be because of viruses, could be because of chronic inflammation. It could be because of iatrogenic factors. And lastly, smoking is also an independent risk factor for the development of white blood cell neoplasms. Now let us understand this one by one. Chromosomal translocations and other acquired mutations, which means in this particular category, we are trying to understand the gene mutations, which are of three main types. Okay, Remember, there are three main types of gene mutations in the entire gamut of WAC neoplasms. And these mutations are categorized into pro-growth mutations, self-renewal mutations, and third category is pro-survival mutations. Now, what are, what are these pro-growth mutations? The pro-growth mutations are the ones which pushes the cell to divide more and more, right? Examples of pro-growth mutations are tyrosine kinase gene mutations and MYC translocation. If you remember these two, it's more than enough, okay? So, what are pro-growth mutations? These are the mutations which push the cell to divide more and more. Second category is self-renewal mutations which means these are the mutations which makes the cell behave like a stem cell, okay? And it keeps on renewing. That's very, very important. These are self-renewal mutations. Examples of these are KMT2A translocation and PML-RARA fusion. These are the two important examples for self-renewal kind of mutations. The third category is pro-survival mutations, which essentially means they prevent the cell from dying. How do they die? By means of apoptosis. So these are the mutations which prevents these tumor cells from dying. And that the example is BCL2 translocation. Okay. I hope you understood the concept of three kinds of mutations, right? Pro-growth, self-renewal and pro-survival mutations. Now, what kind of mutations which are most common in these cases? They are chromosomal translocations. Okay. Now, once there is chromosomal translocation, because of these mutations, the final product which is formed are oncoproteins. Now, so what? What, what happens if there is production of oncoproteins? So, basically, they block the normal maturation. The first and the most important thing is that these oncoproteins block the normal maturation, which means the cells are arrested at one particular point of division. Okay, there is maturation arrest. Second, they also turn on pro-growth signaling pathways. And the third, as I told you, it protects the cells from 
apoptotic death apoptotic cell death so this is the feature of oncoproteins which are derived from the mutations which we just just discussed now that is about myeloid neoplasm some of the lymphoid cancers like lymphomas and some leukemias you know they also occur because of errors during normal immune processes now what do you mean by that let me explain it in detail normally what happens whenever there is infection okay in our body there is activation of b cells okay and once these b cells are activated they move to the germinal center of the lymph node in the germinal center what happens is there is up regulation of something called activation induced cytosine d aminase okay it is up regulated it is expressed what is expressed aid aid stands for activation induced cytokine d aminase now what does this aid do they this basically is a dna modifying enzyme okay now what do we mean by dna modifying enzyme what exactly is the modification which occurs here which means it can happen I mean, it can it can result in two important things one it can result in class switching class switching meaning there is change of one type of antibody to another type of antibody like for example igm gets converted to igg okay and second important modification is somatic hypermutation now what do you mean by that which means it creates mutation in the antibody gene to improve the affinity of the antibody so these are the two kinds of changes which can occur even in normal circumstances whenever we encounter infection right now in the case of leukemias if there is mutation involving this particular aid this is which is a dna modifying enzyme something can go wrong right things can go wrong at this stage now what kind of things which can go wrong which means it can accidentally damage the other parts of the other parts of the dna see the the idea is either you have to do a class switch mutation or it can be change in the affinity of the antibody right but in beyond that it can result in damage of the other parts of dna for example the myc immunoglobulin translocation can occur which can result in some of the b cell lymphomas or it can accidentally mutate the bcl6 gene Now, once there is BCL6 mutation, there is overactivation of BCL6 gene, and that also can result in some follicular cell lymphomas. Okay, so this is one of the important chromosomal translocations. Moving on to inherited genetic factors, we know that some of the inherited genetic syndromes like Bloom syndrome, Fanconi anemia, and ataxia telangiectasia, they these are all the things which can promote genomic instability, which means there is increased chance of mutations again which further means there is increased risk of acute leukemias okay all these inherited genetic factors can result in increased risk of acute leukemias another important example of inherited genetic factors is the down syndrome and type 1 neurofibromatosis which also is seen to increase the risk of childhood leukemias okay remember these two examples one is bloom syndromes fanconi anemia and that ataxia telangiectasia and the second one is down syndrome and type 1 neurofibromatosis now what are the viruses which are implicated in the development of leukemias there are few of these viruses which you should remember one is human t cell leukemia virus or htlv1 second one is epstein barr virus the third one is human herpes virus 8 hhv8 htlv1 can result in t cell leukemia or lymphoma Epstein Barr virus can result in Burkitt's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma and NK cell lymphomas. Whereas human herpes virus 8 can result in B cell lymphomas, you know, it can also present as malignant pleural effusion. Remember, we are talking about white blood cell neoplasms. These viruses can also result in other malignancies, but we are now concentrating on the only white blood cell neoplasms. Now, moving on to another important risk factor which is chronic inflammation. okay so localized chronic inflammation can predispose to neoplastic process particularly the lymphoid neoplastic process for example h pylori okay which is a normal uh, organism which you find in gastric mucosa it can result in gastric b cell lymphoma gluten sensitive enteropathy where there is increased risk of development of intestinal t cell lymphomas 
breast implants because of the chronic inflammatory process surrounding the breast implants it can also give predispose to the development of t cell lymphomas hiv human immunodeficiency virus infected individuals can also have increased risk of development of b cell lymphomas that's about the chronic inflammatory process and its risk factor for the development of leukemias and lymphomas now iatrogenic factors for example radiation and chemotherapy all these two i mean these two things can be mutagenic okay or it can increase the chances of mutation and these mutagenic effects on hematolymphoid progenitor cells of course increases the risk of subsequent either myeloid or lymphoid neoplasms okay radiotherapy or the radiation exposure and chemotherapy both have increased risk of development of lymphoid or myeloid neoplasms and lastly smoking smoking remember it is the important independent risk factor for the development of leukemias and lymphomas because the smoke contains carcinogens such as benzene in tobacco smoke the increase in the incidence of acute myeloid leukemia in smokers is 1.3 to two fold okay so that's about the risk factor associated with smoking and development of white blood cell neoplasms so in this session we discussed about how white blood cell neoplasms are classified and two the general principles of etiopathogenesis of white blood cell neoplasms in my next session i will be discussing in detail about acute myeloid leukemia till then stay tuned if you have liked this video click on the like button do comment if you have anything to ask do not forget to subscribe if you find this video useful do share thank you bye bye